A very good afternoon from the sports desk. As is the case in society in general, racism in sport is a hotly debated topic, especially in local cricket at the moment. In a media briefing today, Cricket South Africa's director of cricket, Graham Smith, spoke on a range of issues. A former team member of, or rather team manager of the Proteas has also spoken about his past experiences on racism. Our man in Cape Town, Justin Ford, has been following today's events and he joins me live now from our studio in the Mother City. A very good afternoon to you, Justin. Now, of course, you joined the media briefing with the director of cricket. What were some of the issues of transformation and racism which were discussed? Yeah, good afternoon, uh, Morena. And, and quite quirkishly, you know, Graham Smith had opened the conversation whereby he was hoping to speak cricket things. Um, and unfortunately, he didn't get that with one or two cricket-related questions. But coming back to the point, you know, following uh, Lungingiri's post with regards to the Black Lives Matter compa uh, campaign, uh, other players following suit, former coaches, players, and so forth, um, and more notably... Makai Antini sharing his, you know, experiences during his playing days and talking about how lonely he was as a player, sitting alone in the bus and, and, and so forth. Um, you know, Graham had spoken openly about his conversation with Makai and, and, and how they were able to, to, to just sort of come to a common ground and hopefully, you know, pave the way forward. And this is ultimately what he had to say. No, we, had, we had a discussion. Um, he shared some stuff with me. I shared some stuff with him. And I think that's what it's about. It's about being able to, to hear each other, talk to each other, communicate and, and find a way forward. And I, I feel that myself and Mackie certainly have, have done that. Now, he speaks, Justin, of the support he's received from the association's president, Chris Nenzani. Absolutely. And I think what has been a problem for Graham since his appointment um, is just the due process, whether the due process was followed in terms of his appointment. He talks about the fact that he went through the complete process, um, you know, in fact, how CSA had courted him and wanted him to be, you know, their next uh, director of cricket. And he was kind of just holding back and wasn't really ready. But he has now committed himself uh, to, the, to the position um, wholeheartedly, he says, you know, cricket is in his heart and so is the country. Um, and, and the president this morning coming out and really supporting Graham and showing, you know, that he has his full backing and any appointments that Graham Smith has since made um, post his appointment as the, the, the director of cricket, which obviously means the appointment of Mark Boucher, um, as well as Enoch and, and, and Shaw Langefeld and, and the likes uh, as far as the assistant coaches are, are concerned. But this is furthermore what he had to say around that. I think those are extremely unfair and I think the it was good to see the president uh, put that straight in an article this morning. Um, uh, you know, I, I feel that there is a slight agenda with some things that are being said. But internally, there is, I, I think, uh, you know, all these leaked documents and trying to create uh, some stories out in the media. Certainly, the, I, I do feel that there is a, a plan at play. Now, of course, Justin, I started off by saying that racism has been a hotly debated topic in South African cricket. In a separate conversation, you were part of a a panel that included Dr. Mohamed Musaji, who, of course, uh, hearing his thoughts on racism in sport. How, how did that play out? So the Ahmed Kathrada Foundation hosted a discussion last night that um, had the likes of J.P. Dumini, Robin Peterson, Mondi Zandeki, um, as well as Dr. Mohamed Musaji, part of this, as well as a representative of the CSA Transformation Committee, uh, Dr. Eugenie. Um, and they just went through their different experiences over the years and surprisingly, it was, you know, the doc that really came out strong in terms of his experiences during that time, uh, talking about, you know, being perceived um, while going on tour and the feelings that certain, you know, uh, teams internationally uh, received him. And also just, you know, his early days as the doctor of the team and later on um, his experience as the team manager uh, of the Proteas. From my point of view, in 2003, when I was appointed uh, the doctor of the team, interestingly enough, you find that there were squad members that were uncomfortable with the fact that there was a so-called non-white doctor that they had to deal with. In fact, it was quite funny because initially it didn't bother, bother me at all. And then when it came to being team manager in the early days of Cricket South Africa, I'm talking of my appointment in 2008, when you talk about prejudice or unconscious bias, it did not only happen in South Africa. So you travel specifically when you go to England and to Australia. 
I think they could not comprehend the fact that you had a person of color that was leading or managing mostly white players. Now, Justin, obviously it's an uncomfortable time for local cricket, but a time that they do, of course, need to confront, and it presents them with an opportunity to, to turn the tide and defeat the scourge of racism, especially in their sport. Absolutely, and, and, and this is what Graham Smith furthermore had alluded to in that, you know, he, him as the director of cricket, he needs to ensure that the current set of players in the national setup um, and the players that are coming through from franchise level, potentially amateur and club level already, have uh, the opportunity to be able to voice their concerns. A lot of these players um, experienced blatant racism um, during their playing days but unfortunately never felt that they felt comfortable enough to be able to share these experiences, whether it be with their, their, their CEOs during that particular times or the presidents, whereas some of them did share it, but nothing had come um, from this. Certain players felt, you know, that if they had spoken up, that they would not have enjoyed the, the sort of longevity that they did enjoy within the national setup. Um, Robin Peterson last night had alluded to, that if he had mentioned, you know, his experiences um, within a provincial game where he was, where the K word was actually used against him, um, he felt that the player that used it against him, he doesn't mention the name, um, that this particular person, you know, would have prevented him from enjoying a what was close to a 19-year career, um, you know, playing professional cricket. Uh, 14 of those years being part of the the, the, the national setup. Justin, what exactly is Graham Smith as the DOC in CSA and the body itself doing to reassure black cricketers that in fact they can come out. I mean I had a conversation with Lonobo Totsobe about a week or two ago where he said there is a big five. There was a big five in South African cricket and I mean he's somebody who played in the days where Graham Smith was the captain and you would imagine that a big five that is spoken of by a prominent black cricketer involves the captain himself where he says this big five you know, was very influential in the decisions that were taken by the head coach and by the association. So what exactly is Graham Smith and the rest of the association saying, you know, to reassure these black cricketers that, in fact, they can come out and speak about the racism that they experienced? So initially, you know, what they, they, they term it to be is a case of, you know, having sort of just brought about the Social uh, Justice Committee um, that, that hopefully will, will champion this whole cause. Um, the the, the um, doc also mentioned last night that you know they are, 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 are of the opinion that a truth and reconciliation committee is required for cricket specifically, and this needs to be done by an independent board and not the current board members. Uh, but coming back to Graham Smith, I think for them a starting point um, within Cricket South Africa is simply to be able to uh, you know engage with past and present players listen to what their fears and concerns are and be able to address it in such a manner that this cannot continue. Um, I mean, we talk about a period of, you know, good, more than 20 odd years that racism within cricket is still prevalent and that these players are experiencing it. All right. Now, finally, but by no means least, the annual G Sport Awards nominees were named today. You spoke to one of them. Well, I spoke to one that, luckily enough, is part of three different categories. So, Momentum uh, Athlete of the Year, Women of the Year, as well as Global uh, Women in Sport. And that is the Springbok Women's Captain Babalwa Lacha. A very happy Babalwa Lacha. We remember that she is the first player um, on the continent that was able to sign a professional contract with a, a, a team overseas. Um, so she joined um, IBAR in Spain. She's since returned and signed another contract and hopefully is able to go back um, towards the end of the year. Um, she obviously hopes to, to lead the Springbok women's team to the World Cup next year in New Zealand as well. But I'm very happy with Balwa and, and really excited to be able to talk about the growth of women in sport. And as we launch, you know, Women's Month and, and, and the G-Sport Awards who, you know, have championed the cause of women in sport locally and have now introduced sort of, you know, African as well as global um, stars uh, to, to the cause. It's really happy and, and from Babawa herself to be, to be nominated and this is what she had to share with us. Quite excited about it but over and above that extremely humbled 
um, you know, it's quite, it's quite humbling um, to, to, to get that type of recognition. Um, you know, it's humbling to see that, you know, the general public is actually, um, you know, recognizing the, the hard work that we put in as sports women. So I'm extremely proud, um, happy, but ex very, very humbled by it. Justin, thank you very much. That is our reporter, Justin Ford, out in our Cape Town studio, just breaking down the conversation that was had by, with Graham Smith a little earlier on today, as well as with Dr. Mohamed Musaji, the former Proteus team manager yesterday, as well as you just saw now, the conversation he was having with the Springbok women's captain and Ibar player, Babalwa Lacha. That is where I'm going to be leaving it for now.